your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Well, welcome home, family. It's your mom, mom and dad, dad and Uncle Lee. Hi. Hi, Sam. Good morning. Good day. Good evening. Well, everyone just like hold my hand right now yep. because I just got to say we're Lee and I are it's from afar. Listen, family, I got to be honest with you straight out the gate. I am an emotional mess today. Mm. Oh. Okay, let's it's wrap this up. <laughs> All right. I'm a little afraid now. <laughs> I am a d- truly a mess. So, so what I just kind of emotions? Give everyone uh, just ahead of time. If all of a sudden I start crying about something, I like. Are you angry? Are you sad? Are you? I'm um, like the, sympathetic. Like, are you? Uh, what do you know? Uh, mem- uh, just full of love for you, and it's just gonna be like one okay, of those. Okay, so it's more. It's a highly <laughs> sexual thing. Understood. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like where the tears oh. are just here. Mm-hmm. Like if I turn a certain way and the wind hits me in a certain direction. I'll start crying. Got you it. know what I mean? Like I went outside for a second and I saw the way a butterfly landed on a leaf and the tears and started the tears coming started and I was like, coming. oh my God, wow. And I, Aww, well, it, that's it's, sweet. it's like tears of abundant joy. Wow. It's, that is, Dear, that is a beautiful beauty. way to look at it. I like looking at it that way. I think it's a combination of number one, it is the second day of my period, which I don't know. I have like a curse that for some reason, the way that my menstruation schedule lines up is yeah. that I always have, we always record on the second day of my period, which is when my emotions come, the cramps come right. and all this. So I don't know. I don't know why that happens. I'll even like, I'll miss days yeah. and it just lines up perfectly <laughs> this way. So I feel like I'm always telling the family like, sorry guys, I'm on my period right now, but or it's the second day. On top of that, yeah. Um, this last weekend we had um, Ember's performance for oh. her uh, second like big theater performance yeah. she was in, and that just always sends me through the roof emotions wise because she is just so filled with joy and it's like electric, and then she's feeling all the emotions because she's just having the best time, and then when it ends, she's sad. Yeah. It's just you know I'm a mess. <laughs> yeah, I mean I've been living through her with this whole thing where it's like. You know, I never was in theater, but Mm -hmm. watching the connection, watching what these kids go through and the time they put in and the work they put in and the emotional bond they create. And then it's just over. I know. Like that's traumatic. (laughs) I was traumatized. Like we went to, they had like a pizza party after, like a rap party. Yeah. Where everyone goes and they're all sitting at this big table and it's the cutest thing ever. And the older kids are like, uh, we're going to go to CVS. And they like <laughs> j- walk across the street. And that's like the cool thing they did. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, we're going to CVS. And they come back with like some candy. And oh, then yeah, they, and then they like come in and them. it's like, it's literally like the the the, 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 the crown has returned. And like yeah. the streets are like, yeah. Like the little kids are like on the sides and they're coming <laughs> back so from so CVS. Old, Cutest thing ever. So sweet. But um, like what? Those are just memories forever. Yeah. You know, and luckily they'll see your, each other in theater class like course. next week. So they will be reunited. But there is this like, when I think about my childhood and yeah. I think about like foundational, it's like that one camp I went to. Yeah. It's that, it's that one sports team we had where we won the championship, whatever, you know, you like remember those people and that coach and that life. So it's like to be in, this is like some old head stuff happening <laughs> right now, but to be in the moment, to be in the good old days with her kind of. Yeah is kind of special to be like witnessing it so we're getting emotional and it's making me just it's just and it's carrying on now into mm-hmm. the rest of the week and then the period second day comes and it's just it's the floodgates i also too here we go uh oh i also too i feel like i've been really going through this like transformative period yeah um and i think watching her is like helping me process this in some way um i'll probably start crying now but I, don't, I haven't, you know, we're, we always talk, we talk reality TV yeah. on this, but I guess I haven't really shared uh, that I've been kind of going through this process lately where I've really been hit and come to realize that I, my whole life valued so much trying to be like an individual and like special in some mm. way where that people would be like, wow, like you're unique in this way yeah. and you stand out in this way. 
and I think that kind of connects with me talking about realizing that I'm a hobbit <laughs> last yeah, week by yeah. Lord of the Rings comparison, where I'm like, stop saying you're an elf, you're a hobbit, it's okay. Like, I've been hit recently with, throughout my whole life, this desire to be like this unique person that people have something to say about. And I'll be real with you, this last six months, I just don't have these super big thoughts to share with people. I don't mm. have these like super sparkly moments or, you know, big ideas or anything to put out there. And I'm feeling like I've been going through this feeling of almost like loss where I'm like, oh man, do am I not special? Do I not have this mm. unique thing? I'm feeling like, oh, I'm just kind of home and I just have my my daily things that I do. And even down to the point where I feel like I haven't been getting invited out as much by friends anymore. Like, and I'm like, oh man, am I boring now? Do people not, am I not exciting anymore? Mm. And it's just those big feelings rushing through and that initial feeling of like, oh man, like loss. And I want to be this unique person and and that processing. But then through these six months realizing like, wait a second though, I'm like probably the most content I've ever been in my life. Mm. And kind of coming to that conclusion of like, hey, it's okay if you don't have, you don't feel like you have something super unique to offer. Like it's okay if you feel boring and you don't have something important to say or if you feel like your life is blah or you feel like maybe the friends aren't around as much and you're not getting invited out as much, like it's okay. Yeah. It's okay because you're having this moment in this experience. And I look at Ember and she's, you know, obviously for her theater is a big thing, but I'm watching her soak up every small moment. Like the moment that one kid offers her one small compliment, she'll lock on to it. And that's so exciting and special. And I'm trying to rewire my brain in a way that like, I need to just, notice those little moments mm -hmm. and like soak those up. And that's what makes life life and mm -hmm. me, you know, myself, I guess. Yeah. I don't know if any of that made sense. It but makes a lot of sense. And I think in this like modern age of social media and everything, it's like everyone has to be a main character. Yeah. And it's like everyone has to be the lead singer, the main character, the, you know, the rock star, the leading, leading person. It's, it's just kind of like, hey, like, first of all, that comes and goes. Right. 100%. Like even an artist working on a book, mm -hmm. it's like you write the book, you release the book and then you sit for a couple of years and you get re-inspired and then you write a book, but you can't always be, you know what I mean? It's not every day you are main character and social media and like modern age feels like we it were always supposed to be something all the time. And it's like, how about you just live a life for a minute? Yeah. No, you know totally. what I mean? No, totally. I mean, we're constantly growing and changing as people and you know, like you are like the person you were before. Yeah. But it's also kind of, there is this like kind of grieving where you acknowledge like who you used yes. to be. Uh, because that once was truly you, I feel, yeah. you know, but you're like, mm. but I feel differently now. And now you're like this wonderful, unique hobbit, you know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. no, I love but that. it's different. Yeah. 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 It just, and I, yeah. it does, and I feel different. And there is, man, sorry, there is this, <laughs> I told you, it's, yeah. the, it's the tears. There is this grieving process when you see yourself changing and maybe it's aging, you know, yeah. like, where things shift and you're seeing your kid getting older and then, I don't know, life just changes. But it's good. Yeah. You know, but there yeah. is that grief. Mm -hmm. And uh, sorry, guys, this is embarrassing. No, not at um, all. Not at all. Starting off our Bachelor recap. Yeah. <laughs> if you're new here, if you're new here. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> what we do is we cry for the first 10 minutes and then we get in to what Joey's up to. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so ridiculous. Um, no, not at all. There's there's life for you. But I think even in Ember's um, show that she did this weekend, there was a, the, a, a, a heavy topic in the play that she did was that this feeling of like, oh, I want to be important. But it's like, hey, no, we're you're important to someone, but we're all unimportant too. Yes. And like just being okay. And I'm having, I'm, I'm moving through that of being like, hey, you know what? If I'm only ever just important to the few people in my life, who know me and love me, that's beautiful. Mm, you know, and that's yeah. the impact that I can make. Mm. So anyway, <laughs> I think that's just I think it's time for an ad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you so much. <laughs> and that's what it's like to live with me. Welcome to the Evans world. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. I think it's an amazing I think it's a good message for everyone to go into today with. 
It's like, yeah. take that pressure off, man. Yeah. Like, just be who you are right now. Be be here now. I mean, that's just, you know, obviously we know that saying, but there yeah, is this level of like, stop thinking about all the things you should be, the things you haven't accomplished, all the things. And just like, let it just go for a minute and just sit in it and allow yourself to maybe grieve some things that you regret, grieve yeah. some things that you missed out on, grieve some things that you're not doing anymore. But then also understand that like, to your point, Lee, it's like, that's the evolution of life. It's like, yeah. we're constantly changing and moving and, you know, yeah. it's beautiful. I appreciate you guys letting me speak my emotional truth this morning. I love you. <laughs> I love you. you absolutely. <laughs> now let's take a quick pause. Quick pause. <laughs> family listen it's no secret you know me guys <laughs> you yes. know me well yes. listen it's no secret that sometimes i can be one of those people that doesn't prioritize certain forms of wellness hi hello and it's mostly because i'm not sure how to do so practically but 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 a few months ago i came across aloe moves and that changed my mindset and that's because the app makes it so easy to keep my wellness routine on track because they have everything in one place oh my gosh the practicality of it all yes there's yoga pilates and fitness classes mindfulness self-care tips recipes and so much more hello you know i've been doing those mindfulness and self-care yeah. tips recently yeah yeah from beginner to advanced aloe moves has the flow or class that will fit your schedule which i really love their classes range from five minutes to an hour depending on what you're feeling that day are you trying to get in a good sweat you've got to try their award-winning workouts like sweat inducing yoga flows hit classes or reformer pilates workouts with or without weights i love their yoga classes mm -hmm. I do them at home all the time so much an amazing amazing workout or check this out you can find stress relief with meditations affirmation face yoga gua sha dry brushing and journaling for those quiet moments and when it comes to sleep it's just as important as moving and fueling your body so okay listen to me family ever since i watched the art of sleep on aloe moves i've been falling asleep faster and staying asleep longer which is huge for me so you have to check it out for real i'm obsessed with aloe moves because i'm able to create my own personal wellness routine it's kind of like we were just saying like what's gonna work for you to be honest here's my thing i got my very short movement class in there because i'm in a space where i need to work my way up to longer ones and my bigger focus is meditation and dry brushing and sleep and i love that aloe moves is so personal and offers so much and whatever's best for you Unlock your personal wellness routine with Allo Moves. Go to allomoves.com now and use code MOMDAD30 for an exclusive 30-day free trial and enjoy 20% off an annual membership. That's allomoves.com, code MOMDAD30, allomoves.com, code MOMDAD30. Well, I think it's time for us to talk about The Bachelor. Yes. Because life is all about balance. And so we cry a little <laughs> yes. bit at the beginning of the day. And then we follow it up with reality television. It's because, like we, it was like a family moment. We went through. We were talking. We were crying. Yeah. We were, oh, my gosh. And then all of a sudden, it's just like, did you hear what's going on with her across no, the it's, street? <laughs> no, it's truly. I'm like, it's a glimpse into my life. I'm like a little bit of a cry, some reality TV. And then you guys can join me for a bath later. But not because that's probably not appropriate. To say, <laughs> that you know, is whatever. subscription based. Yeah, <laughs> okay, that's very true. Very true. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Um, okay, but first, I do want to say this, yeah. everybody. We have been recapping Love Is Blind. This season is but nanas and a few days ago, yeah, more drama and came, like and news came out that involves Trevor. Yeah. that involves Jeremy. Um, I know. There's some stuff going on with Jess. All good things, too. Just, just <laughs> just like, wow. great things. I think good things with Jess, but with the guys, we're getting the vibe, you know? Oh, yeah. We're finding out some info, um, but don't want to spoil any of that uh, for any of you who haven't watched any of the episodes yet and are needing to catch up on Love is Blind because you should watch it because it's an amazing so season. Um, but just wanted to remind you all that we are doing that. So go back and look for those episodes. And I know if you're listening to this on Wednesday, some new episodes of Love is Blind officially dropped. We're not doing an uh, Love 
Love is Blind episode this week. We're going to do one next week. So stay tuned for that next week where we'll be all caught up once again. I'm so excited. Oh, God, it's been so good. It's so dramatic. It's it's definitely by far, in my opinion, the most chaotic, the most twists, the most uncomfortable (laughs) season I've ever seen. Yeah, I'm pretty like the jaws on the floor. It's the most uncomfortable. I'm always just, I'm just like in my chair, like, ah, like just cringing (laughs) and just like so uncomfortable. And I think the world agrees with you because I heard the ratings are pretty through the roof. Yeah. Because uh, it's just one of those seasons. It's a stomach ache. The whole thing's a stomach ache. You're just like, oh God, how's this happening right now? It truly is. It's, it's, it's a, it's like, you can't look away. But you can't believe you're watching it. It's 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 really good. It's absolutely fabulous. Um, but we're not here to discuss but that not, nonsense. Yes. We are here to discuss the latest episode of The Bachelor. Um, and they have made their way to Canada. This is the week before Hometowns. And I have to tell you all, I it just sends me into like a giggle tizzy mm. thinking about the fact that our girl Maria almost sent herself home right, right, and right. maybe Joey almost sent her home and I believe what pushed her over the edge was having to do all the log rolling not all the drama yeah. <laughs> just, it just makes me laugh that it was like outdoor shit it was like what pushed her <laughs> finally to the edge it was like I've dealt with weeks of <sighs> the women coming at me I'm having to go on these two on ones defend myself we're just fighting 24 7 and now you've taken me to a lumberjack date where I have to split logs like yeah. I think that is truly what sent her over the edge she's like I can't do this anymore and then emotionally she just started to spiral I completely agree it's like those those dates where it's like physical fitness God, they're just... always the worst because nothing about the date is connecting with the person like no. he's always just over there <laughs> and then they're just filming them do a bunch of shit so it's kind of like Nothing about the group date is a group date. It's yeah. a physical fitness challenge where Joey's where while Joey's doing ITMs in the corner. The like, only time there's I can, no connection. The only time I can ever get it is if they're doing something physical that involves like a big hobby of the lead. Like for example, when they're doing the tennis, I get that. Right. It's like for Joey, he might want someone who sure. is a fun tennis partner or down to potentially right. do that. But like how often is Joey gonna need one of these women to roll a log? Yeah, like that I'm, feels I'm, dirty, but whatever. Uh, yeah. I'm feeling like at this point in time. Yeah. These dates, I don't really get the whole like it, 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 we're, we're late in the game. The kind of game dates feel kind of like, what are we doing? You could tell they're like, why are we doing this? Can we do something more romantic and kind of magical in the yeah, city of Jasper? No. You just stick me out in the woods and just make me work while he's doing an ITM, you know? I understand it's definitely that. not like it just feels like a like it just kind of a wash. But as an audience member, I do like watching it because I feel like that's when people start to spiral while other people are like succeeding at certain things. But I don't know. I just it just absolutely cracked me up to watch Maria just be like, Oh hell no, I'm not doing this. Like it was the first time. I felt like we really saw her crack because up to this point, like she's had her issues with people and they've had issues with her and there's been like this thing, but she's always kind of been pretty positive. She's always kind of been pushing past and kind of been like, today's a good day. Mm -hmm. Today, she was like, I'm jealous. And guess what? I related to Maria cracking because if they would have said, guess what? You're doing a lumberjack date after right before we did the pretty woman date where I got a Rolls Royce in the dress. (laughs) I'd be like, I fought everyone to do this. Also, I'd be, if I was one of these women or one of the guys, whatever, if I'm ever on this show and I'm like, I haven't gone to work. I've called out of work for eight weeks. In fact, maybe I lost my job. I'm really hoping that on these dates we get to do, I don't know, skydiving, the pretty woman date. Yeah bungee jumping not like make me roll this log or like drink this milk or things like that or like throw these sausages oh. in my face and oh like- the milk <laughs> the milk was insane it was a thick it was like milk. elk milk it or was something. a thick milk dude that was oh. yogurt yeah it was like a thick when milk. she drank it it was like <laughs> It was like, I was like, she ate it. She didn't drink oh, it. That was no. gnarly. Yeah, definitely needed And she's spoon. lactose. She said she's allergic to like milk products or something. So then she's just like, well, I was like, you are heavy metal. That milk, I would have been out on the milk. That was wild. Truly a champion. But anywho, I just had to mention, it just, it just literally sent me to the yeah. moon. The idea that, that Maria, what cracked her is just being like, 
listen, I don't camp, I glamp. I don't do the yeah. outdoor things. Where is the champagne on tap? Yes. Where are the mimosas? Where are the beignets? Where are like, give me that energy. Yeah, I mean, she's like Willy Wonka's daughter. So I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like when you actually think about it, <laughs> Willy Wonka wasn't a big, you know, I guess he, that's how he went out. But so he found the ingredients is by uh, hiking. But yeah, I think she's Willy Wonka's daughter. Yeah, when daughter. you're like, listen, you're like, my dad is the Sprinkle she's King, like, the Sprinkle Empire King. I live like, in the Wonka factory. Like I don't do all this hiking. <laughs> um, okay so let's start from the top though yeah. um we are in jasper which truly looks fake is magic yes. like okay i might start crying again shut <laughs> up <laughs> you gonna cry about the lake <laughs> it was so blue that color was unbelievable i've never seen water look like that again <laughs> from jasper oh, it was so magical yeah. all i could think about when i was seeing just that stunning lake and the trees and the elk wandering around mm. i'm like can you imagine doing a D, &D game in the middle of that Ooh. forest I just, that would be cool. I just pictured just the trio, our trio, just like hiking <laughs> through the woods. And maybe that's what made me emotional. Oh gosh, just a side note, I've ever thought about D&D &D, like in the woods around a fire. Oh, I bet that's so fun. That would be incredible. Oh, that would absolutely slap. Whee! Okay, cool. Something <laughs> to think about. Well, I was watching, I mean, I was, when I was seeing the forests of Jasper and like the lake of Jasper, I was just, I was thinking D&D. &D. Yeah. When I was seeing the elk, I was thinking you, you have to know there are so many crows around here. Like, <clears> take me true. there. I felt genuinely, supremely jealous. Wow. It was insane. Yeah. I also am starting to feel like, so we see then Joey with Jesse Palmer. Yeah. We're experiencing Canada. This is yeah. Jesse's time to shine, okay? Mm -hmm. I feel like um, after I've seen Jasper, I'm like, I never want to leave Canada. Jesse Palmer has left his absolute imprint upon me. Um, but also, we see Jesse Palmer playing tennis with Joey for the fifth time. Yeah. Almost every episode, wherever their location is, Joey and Jesse are just playing a quick game of tennis. And it made me realize that no matter who the next bachelor or bachelorette is Jesse Palmer will hate them because now he's used to traveling <laughs> yeah, with a tennis I mean, now, pro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unless, like, unless, what unless else he, can someone offer? <laughs> unless it's like a Bigfoot, you know, unless one of these people are like a Bigfoot gu tour guide. <laughs> I don't think anyone's, you know no what I mean? No one will meet the needs of Jesse Maybe an ex-NFL guy he can like talk about the good old days with or something. True, Other than true. that, you're absolutely right. It's kind of all downhill He's going to hate whoever's next because it's going to be like, what are we going to do together? Because I what? have free tennis lessons. We're going to have coffee <laughs> together. Right. Now he's like, he's been improving on his game. It's actually like, how come you never call me anymore? <laughs> I thought we were friends. I love tennis too. <laughs> I thought we were best friends. <laughs> he just he like he like he like sends him pictures, selfies of like in tennis outfits and stuff. He's like, look, please invite. Me. I could be Joey too. No, but he'll hate them. Yeah, he's got a free tennis pro, and also like I said, I believe and a really I saw chill guy. Like he's not aside super, from leaving the tennis, the guy's just like super kickback, you yeah. know. But like I think also we talked about how Joey. I saw in an interview that he also was started off as like a golf pro. So they're going golfing, really? they're playing tennis. Yeah, or he did it at one of the hotels he worked at. It's like I think my dream man. <laughs> like my dream friend literally just it's so incredible. chill tennis golf he can oh do it my all God. so yeah jesse palmer's gonna hate whoever yeah, comes next 100 percent. um the i feel like the only thing like aside from the bigfoot maybe if we got a chef that would be amazing i don't think we've ever had a bachelor or bachelorette who was a chef have we ever had anyone that was a chef on the show like, yes okay there has been contestants i remember one specific contestant yeah who was a, a really good looking guy who was a oh chef. My God. Being yeah, like, you compete wow. with that, dude. I was like, wowzers. How do you compete with that? It was a full blown, it was just an HBO style. Just like nude in his, uh, in his, in his apron. No, I mean like, like a show. Oh, <laughs> like an HBO oh. Max type of show, like oh. a chef show. I thought you were like late night HBO. You know what I mean? no, it just felt like it would be like a dramatic show. Yeah, you know? got it, got it. Yeah, well, that that would be nice, and he'd cook him. But then he, yeah, I guess he, he, 
uh, he would probably want to learn how to cook, but he's always like, I'm cooking for him. Like, oh, my God, JP, I have something fresh. I tried well, these new croissants. You're it's like, like oh, maybe yeah. JP wants to dabble in the arts of culinary skills, or but more than anything, for. it's like you're cooked for. Like when we sit down, instead of just having a nice coffee, it's like, hey, I've made yeah. these pastries. I've, you know, made this delicious uh, dish right. lo- to the local area, whatever. I don't know what <laughs> words to use for cooking. I've never cooked before. <laughs> the local area dish that I've made. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I've cooked a dish of the local area that is delicious <laughs> and that a chef would love. Um, Anywho. Anyway. Anywho. Sorry, guys. I'm um, not sure where that was coming from. Oh, Jesse Palmer and Joey. Yeah. That's it. Um, yeah, he's going to hate whoever comes next, unless it's a chef or a Bigfoot enthusiast. Uh, but they have their moment together where Joey is, you know, opening up. I feel yeah. like I feel like that's where you get Joey to open up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We really haven't gotten deep into Joey, minus his fears, yeah. at least from the editing of it all. We don't know tons about Joey. Right. But we do know that his big, big, big fear is that someone will not think he is enough and will leave. Uh, I do want to discuss this later because around some of the Maria conversation and the Daisy conversation, I'm curious about the way he's approaching feeling rejection because it is a little bit of a curiosity to me. I have some thoughts too. Yeah, 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 Yeah. it's interesting to me. But he shares with Jesse Palmer, that's his big concern. Um, And, you know, Jesse stands there smiling and is like, let's get back to the goddamn tennis game. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Or match, whatever they call it. Right, 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 right. But that's then when we see the ladies, uh, they get to Jasper. There's tension. Everyone's on edge now. Yeah. Everyone's really feeling it. The jealousy is starting to sink in. And it's like, who's going to get the second Mm one-on-one? There's their second one-on-one because now we get to do a round two of one-on-ones and everyone's like, I need more time before hometowns, which is interesting that that's a big push on this episode because for some reason, maybe I'm mixing up things, but I feel like often there are people who are still around right before the hometown episode who haven't even gotten one date yet. So it's interesting to me that a lot of the women are like, I need more time with him to secure this hometown. That's an interesting concept to me. I feel like normally everyone's kind of like gung ho. Let's just go to hometown. But a lot of people are like, I need more time with him to secure something. Do you mean their own feelings? Or are you talking about secure their place in his feelings? Yeah, I'm not sure what it is. Obviously for Daisy, we know where her her feelings are, but everyone else feels like they need to kind of lock in Mm. how Joey feels about them. Yeah, Yeah. it's it's curious. We'll talk about it. We've got to take another quick pause. Um, Family, I will tell you what, if I was going on a reality TV show, a big thing personally I'd be wanting to make sure of is that I smell good for those first impressions. But to be honest... Just recently, as I've gotten older, I have also gotten stinkier. Fun fact for all of you (laughs) at home. Uh, My pits, my feet, all of it. But I found a solution to smelling good everywhere. And that's thanks to our sponsor, Lumi. Lumi is a game-changing whole body deodorant designed by an OBGYN to work not only on pits, but also feet, the nether regions, and everywhere else we get odor. I personally always have it on, on my pits, my feet, my under boobs, my thighs, all of it. And oh my God, it works so well. Thank yes. you, Lumi. <laughs> yes. In fact, it is clinically proven to block odor all day and control odor for up to 72 hours. Mm-hmm. How, you ask? Unlike certain traditional deodorants that try to mask odor with a fragrance, Lumi is formulated and powered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it starts. More like a pre-odorant, it's baking soda-free, paraben-free, and it's pH balanced for safe use below the belt. Mm-hmm. It really is amazing and keeps me smelling good for so long even as I get stinkier with age. And by the way, they've got over 275,000 five-star reviews to show for it, okay? So the people have spoken. Make the switch to Lumi, and this year will be all about head-to-toe confidence, baby. Lumi's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, which is my love, by the way, two products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code MOMDAD at LumiDeodorant.com that equates to over 40% of your starter pack when you visit LumiDeodorant.com and use code MOMDAD. 
Okay, so first we have uh, the one-on-one date with Daisy. Daisy ends up getting the yeah. uh, second rounds of one-on-ones, <clears throat> which makes sense to me because she got the first one-on-one. Yeah, so it's been a while. Yeah, so it wasn't like, oh, it no, was no. a I, huge th- shock. I think everyone, like Jen walked out of the room, obviously tweaked or whatever, but yeah. that was probably just because she's, th- th- that didn't feel like a because Daisy got it or no, because, wait a second, no, no, I, no, no, I deserve no. it. It was like, it has, she had been the longest one since she had had it. It's because everybody's <clears> on edge. Everyone's really on edge. They're on edge. And I'm trying to really figure out exactly why. That's why I was asking those questions before. I'm trying to figure out if it's because everyone is like really caught up in Joey or if it's because we don't know each other enough. I think it's all for different reasons. Okay. Like I think yeah. everyone That's is on true. edge everyone for is different an individual. reasons. <laughs> it's not all group think. <laughs> well, no, I think there can be group think. I think yeah. early on, that's when you have everyone kind of group thinking. Yeah. But now I feel like everyone's got their own reason why they're on edge. Yeah. Like, I think Maria's on edge because she's this whole, this whole kind of process is getting to her. I think Daisy's on edge because she's kind of actually unsure about him. Yeah. I think um, Jen is on edge because she's a feeling like I might get cut here because I feel like maybe the last little chunk since our day we haven't really connected. I don't, you know what I mean? I, I don't know what, but I'm sensing in her kind of what happened. Like, I don't feel super safe right now. Yeah. Um, I think Kelsey's the least on edge. I was going to say my girl Kelsey but was I think the least. Kelsey it. also seems to be very comfortable with the process. She's kind of from since day one, she's never been, never been no, a part of. No, remember she had a meltdown a couple weeks ago. She was struggling a couple she weeks was, ago. But, but I'm saying she's never been like a part of a problem. She's she's always seemed to be like really positive around everyone. Yeah. Like seemed to. She did just have the last one on one. She just too. had the last. So, so that's another one fresh. too. Is having like like her and Maria. Yeah. Having that helps with that process at least. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, I think everyone kind of has their own reasons why they're feeling because it's like, wait, hometowns is like massive jump in regards yeah. to how, the serious levels. Right True. now you're at camp. Yeah. When you take it home, now we're like, wait, now I brought my boyfriend home from summer camp and yeah. now it's like, where it's are the we real dating? Deal. You know, yeah. It's so, the real deal. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Um, yeah, but I, I'm just feeling, it's just interesting. I feel like... It was an edgy episode. It, I feel like the last two episodes, the, the, the emotions are quite thick compared to how I normally feel like the energy is because the women all seem to really enjoy each other now. Like now that, you know, certain uh, characters have left, I feel like all the women are really lovely and really support and love Mm -hmm. each other. So it's not like the tension is thick because there's drama in the house. It's like, oh, this is an interesting dynamic. Yeah. Um, Okay, so Daisy has her one-on-one date, and they start this off by horseback riding, which... I mean, it looks like a video game. It did look like a video game. Talk about Zelda. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. That was pure Jasper. I was very the jealous. The horseback riding in Jasper <laughs> is pure Zelda. Okay. It was incredible. Oh, it was absolutely Yeah, it actually stunning. looked like the hot springs in Zelda, which I don't think you've seen yet. Don't say that. There's that hot springs. Really are you familiar with the hot springs in Zelda? No. So in Zelda, in <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom, you can find on the outskirts these hot springs. And if you go into the hot springs, your hearts come back. So it heals you. Oh. Very magical. Anyway, this Jasper place <laughs> looked like that. Dang, I'm jealous that I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> well, as I watched and thought, wow, this is absolutely stunning and I'm so jealous. I did think of you, though, because I know that you always talk about the dates where you feel like you can't connect with the person. And I feel like I have discovered in my personal space that horseback riding is actually the date where you connect with the person the least. Ah. Uh. Because you're very preoccupied with the horse. Because number one, you can't hold hands. Number two, the way that they have it set up is they're always one person in front yeah. of the other. So you can't even barely talk. You're just going the whole time. Like, you know, uh, your you dog's po- uh, your dog. Oh, your horse is pooping. Yeah. <laughs> you're really? watching the, the, the horse poop. Right. Whoever is behind. Like you just the dynamic. You can't have like a flowing conversation. No. And then all. Uh, versus, you know, if you're doing something frightening, you have the adrenaline, or if you're doing even games, you're still interacting with each other. With horseback riding, you're purely interacting with the horse. And personally, for me, I'd probably like that more. I'd be more invested in my relationship with this sweet, sweet horse yeah. than getting to know The Bachelor. Um, but I feel like I'm like, yeah, that's not a, a date where you connect. So for Daisy, who is like feeling kind of question marks right now, I'm like, this isn't necessarily the date for right. her. Unless, right. Unless you're like um, rancher vibes, you know what I mean? And you're like, you're like riding next to each other and you're just like, my father owned this land. 
Oh, Billy. You know what I mean? Like, and you're, and you're, and you're kind of like, you're kind of like cool. You know what I mean? You're like a cool cowboy, just cowgirl, and you're kind of riding next to each other. But if you're just a tourist like them, not, not great. Well, and like Joey said, he's never ridden a horse before. So like, yeah. here's so the he's thing about like, riding a horse. This, I hope this thing doesn't take off on me. Yeah. I, I, I used to ride horses occasionally when I was younger. Yeah. And I still, as someone who's ridden a horse numerous times, I have to like seriously concentrate if I'm riding a horse. No, it's no joke. It's no joke. It's, so you're it's, like, a, it's an animal. So you're like, hey, I'm having to really pay attention. And yeah. I can't engage with you at all. Um, but then they did end up having their their hot tub moment. The yeah. hot tub showed up finally. We haven't seen that finally hot tub in a, in a hot minute. Gorgeous. Hot tub in a hot minute. Beautiful. But I sensed immediately, like where they pulled up to the hot tub, they did an ITM with her. Mm -hmm. And she was just like, yeah, I, I, he's great. He's a great guy and I like him a lot. And I was just like, that felt weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there was like zero butterflies in the way that she said that. So when they got in the the tub and he's kind of like talking at her and then she's kind of like one word answering yeah. and then they start kissing. I was even watching the kiss and the kiss from her end was kind of like eyes glued tight, kind of like focusing on the kiss, not like... Oh overtaken by the kiss yeah. like it felt like she was kissing as opposed to like I, getting lost in like the romance of the connection i could like sense her before she even said like i'm not in love with you or I'm, or I'm afraid to talk to him about everything it was like i could sense even in the kiss that like something's weird yeah so she ends up saying in itms that she's like I really like him, but I am not in love with him. I yeah. haven't fallen in love with him and I'm not falling. I haven't fallen yet. And so I'm not going to lie to him and yeah. tell him that that's the case, even though I know that this is like, you know, it's a big thing for him. Like, I should be there by now. Kind of energy. Yeah, at least she feels that way because it seems like everyone else around everyone her else has is. shared that with him, yes. or they, and they've probably talked, you know, yeah. in the in the hotel rooms, like, oh, I've fallen for him, and yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just, you know, I'm just a puddle for Joey, and exactly. she's probably a little bit like, yeah, I like him a lot. He seems like cool a great guy, guy. <laughs> dope guy, but like, I've I don't know. Twice, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> we did one day three conversations. We had one date a couple weeks ago, right. and then you know, I have like five minutes here and there with yeah. him. I he gave me a decent foot rub, but it wasn't great, yeah. so I don't really know how. I feel about right, it. Right, right. Um, which, you know, well, then they ended up sitting down together and um, after the hot tub. And yes, I, you could feel the tension. Obviously, like the tenseness. Obviously, Joey felt it because he did bring it up as soon as they sat down. He yeah. was like, are you okay? Like something's clearly not the same. You called me bro earlier. <laughs> you called me dude. <laughs> yeah, you were like, hey, dude, quick question. And it, that was a little new and wasn't sure how that I felt about that. You called me brethren <laughs> earlier. <laughs> you gave me a fist bump when we left. But that was kind of new. I wasn't sure if that was something you were you trying we out or... <laughs> Yep. <laughs> you said something about like, we'd be such good friends, and I just was like a little confused by that. We'd be great pals, man. <laughs> when you said you're kind of like a brother to me, I I did feel a little strange. Just wanted to kind of check in on that, see if that was a bit <laughs> touch base. <laughs> um, no, but she, you know, then she shares. She's like, listen, I. And she was fully honest with him. She's like, I really like you, yeah. but like, I'm not there yet. Like I have not, I'm not falling in love with you yet. Yeah. I'm not there yet. Um, and you know what? I was seeing some online conversation actually about numerous things um, on this specific episode. And I think some people weren't vibing with the way that, that she did it. And oh, I'll, wow. be, I'll be real with you. I really respected it. Mm. I thought it was, I'm like, damn, she just. Well, how else could she have done it? Well, I think I, I'm not even sure, but I was just seeing chatter about like, oh, it reminds me of this person and da, 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 oh, da. Interesting. And I'm a little bit like, I think that it the it was purely like, hey, this is how I feel and I'm not going to lie to you. And I know honesty is really important to you. And I know this could send me home and, and I'm worried about that and that yeah. would suck. But I'm also, I can't look at you and say like, I'm in love with you. And I think a big part of the conversation too is that like she shared Everything she's gone through over the last, I mean, however many years of her life, yeah. all the struggles she's been through, all the health issues that she's been through. She was like, hey, I need you to meet my family 
uh, before I feel a certain way because there needs to be conversations. Like my family is going to have a lot of questions about the way that they've been there for me throughout my health and like, what does that look like to you if right. something were to happen to me in the future? Like what, what, what are these thoughts? And I felt it was like kind of a Lexi conversation about the, the having a kid. Exactly. It was kind of like, here's kind of a prerequisite to kind of knowing me. Yes. There is some possibilities of changes here. Yeah. A hundred percent. It creates in you a sense of like, I have to protect myself from 100%. jumping into something and then be like, surprise, by the way, this might not be our life forever. You know, a hundred percent. And I felt like it was, it was a, very like brave conversation of her to be like, Hey, I'm not just going to feed you what you want. I also think that she isn't as head over heels maybe yet as some of the other, as much as some of the other women are. I think that she probably out of everyone was the least caught up in the group think. Yeah. Like to me, I get the sense. Yeah. First of all, she was never involved in any drama. No, she was never involved in any like anything. Mm -mm. You never saw her melting. You just kind of always saw her just kind of there and observing. And I feel like also what can happen, I would imagine, is a group think of falling in love with him where it's like everyone's fighting for him. So then your brain is like, I like him, too. You know what I mean? Like you kind of like. You're just kind of in it, you know, and then you kind of get like swept up and then that's why people get home and they're like, wait, do I even like you? Yeah, but like, sure. you know, you get, but she's not that way at all. No. So I think she's coming at this from like a very pragmatic kind of practical and she's just kind of like, like, and not panic at all. Just kind of like, yeah, I mean, I like him a lot, but how can I fall in love with him? I barely know him kind oh. of energy. Mm-hmm. Oh, the only thing I found interesting was how she was like, yeah, I don't love you, but I still like you a lot. Um, but I still want you to meet my family. I, I was kind of ready for her to be like, I thought I would be farther along. I think I'm going to see myself out. But the fact that she was like, thank so nervous. Got a rose was so grateful. Yeah. It was a little like, whoa, are you expecting then to fall in love later? Is it like maybe he, cause you know, this at the end of this is like, like a ring. It's not like, and then you start, it's like, there is like a level of like, yeah, at some point I mean, you're going to have to cross that threshold. I will say by the end of the episode when they were ice skating, she said in the ITM, she's like, oh, I think I'm falling. Yeah, that's true. So I don't know if she needed maybe another date to like solidify because it'd been like, hey, it's been literally weeks since we've spent any time together, more than a five minute, you know, little convo that I need yeah. more time. Or if she's just kind of. Because the energy is interesting with Daisy is throughout the whole thing. Like they definitely have like great chemistry together and seem like they really, really like each other and that she's super into him. But then this episode really threw me off that I'm like, does she like him? But is she just not? It was just not. She's a slow burn, maybe too. Yeah, in general. This, I feel like she's a slow burn in general. Yeah, like this process might be just too. I mean, I'm I'm curious if maybe at hometowns, then it might be like after conversation with the family that she might be the one who's like, I don't think this is for me. Or and maybe she's done or it. Or her hometowns. family's so precious to her that if her family likes him, that. That could push her. her affection. Yeah, no, you know, that's that true. Can happen too. That's true. Okay, I have some thoughts specifically about Joey, though, okay. his response to all of this, um, which we'll discuss in one moment. One quick pause. So, um, seeing all of these ladies, everybody with their gorgeous locks all season, has me thinking about hair. And speaking of hair, hair thinning impacts a lot of us. Oh, hi. It's me. Nice to meet you. Um, In fact, over half of us will experience hair thinning at some point in our lives. It's not only common, it's normal. Listen, fam, join the over 1 million people who are doing something about it with Nutrafol. Yes, we just started Nutrafol recently, and I'm so excited because I know so many people who use Nutrafol and love it, like love it, love it, and they love it, love it because they love the results that they're getting. That's for sure. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement with over 1 million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding. It's physician formulated with drug free ingredients. Nutrafol supports healthy hair growth from within by targeting key root causes of thinning like stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, lifestyle, and metabolism through whole body health. I love that. And here's the thing. While many supplements rely solely on ingredient studies, Nutrafol clinically tests final formulations to ensure their efficacy. In clinical studies, 72% of men saw more scalp coverage after taking Nutrafol men's hair growth supplement for six months, and 86% of women saw improved hair growth after taking Nutrafol women's hair growth supplement for six months. That's 
amazing. What's amazing about Nutrafol 2 is that they know a one-size-fits-all approach to hair growth doesn't cut it. Nutrafol has multiple formulas that are tailored to give your hair what it needs to grow based on your biology, life stage, and lifestyle factors. Uh, take their hair wellness quiz at Nutrafol.com for a personalized hair health plan based on your specific root causes. With Nutrafol, building a hair growth routine is simple. Purchase online, no prescription or doctor visits required. Free shipping and automatic Automated delivery services ensure you'll never miss a day. See results in three to six months. Like I said, we recently started taking Nutrafol and I am thrilled. Take the final step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code MOMDAD. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and stylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com, spelled N U T R A F O L.com, promo code mom dad. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code mom dad. Okay, so this was what I was going to say about Joey that was so interesting to me. So here we have Daisy who says, Listen, I'm not falling for you yet. But I do want you to meet my family. And Joey was very much like, I totally get it. Mm -hmm. um, I want to meet your family too. And he didn't really, unless of course they cut it, he didn't really seem to have that tough of a time processing that she yeah. wasn't quite where all the other women were. And he gave her the rose and he's like, I can't wait to meet your family. Um, versus... Then when Maria later is like, I like you so much, I can't handle you kissing other women and seeing you in front of seeing um, you with these other women in front of me and knowing you feel the same way. I think I might leave. And then that to him was like, she doesn't love me enough. And that's an interesting concept to me because it seems like Joey very much he values more someone willing to stay and battle through the process, even if they're not quite far enough or as far along as someone else. Do you understand what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying, but what I think is missing there a little bit yeah. is that if you're talking about leaving, that means the relationship's over. If you are not where you want to be, but you're staying, there's still hope. I understand. And so it's kind of pulling the rip cord if you leave. It's like deleting the option anymore. I'm not saying it's bad or, or good. I'm more just saying like, so the fall, like clearly he has a fear of being left. He's talked about it many times. So that's right. obviously number one fear. Yeah. But secondary to that is the idea that like, even if you don't love him yet, if you stick around, we might get there. But if you leave, it's over because I got to stay here and go through no, this whole process. I, no, I, no, I, I totally hear you. I guess Unless I was he's going to leave the show. You I know guess what I mean? was just surprised because every time we hear him talk about, you know, what his fear is, a lot of it, obviously it's someone leaving. But I feel like at the root of it, the conversation is like, They're not I love feel me. like they won't love me enough. Yeah. And I feel like the love is being quantified by like, you know, are they willing to stay and go through this process? Right, right. Because... You know, when he was comparing it to like, okay, yeah, I stayed through with charity. And then at the very end, I wasn't, you know, quote unquote enough uh, for her, which obviously that's not how like love works. Yeah. But um, that feeling of like, oh, I I'm not enough. And it was just interesting to me that like that's how it's being labeled yeah. versus I guess if I was I guess my thought would have been from everything that Joey said is that he might be thrilled to hear someone's like I'm so in love with you right. that like I don't think I can even be here anymore because it's torture to see you with someone else do you understand see, what I'm saying I would have liked that more yeah maybe that's why I'm translating it that yeah, way yeah <laughs> like I would much rather have someone say I'm madly in love with you and I'm too jealous to go through this process than to say I'm unwilling to go through this process but I don't love you like yeah. to me I mean, I don't have maybe abandonment triggers that way. Yeah. So that's not my thing. Yeah. Lack of love would be the thing. You know what I'm saying? So what like and then Maria coming back in and then be like, I'm sorry, whatever. Like that whole process, I would have enjoyed much more than someone being like, I'm not quite there with you that I'm not sure how I feel, but I'm willing to keep going. Yeah. I would have been like, uh, 
I don't think I'm interested now because there's like got like four other women that are actually really into me. I think I'm going to invest in right. that because I could end up with you. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying no, no, I, no. I would probably see myself being like, I don't know if I want to keep working yeah, at I'm, this I'm knowing that I might in, not get there. Unless yeah. it's like one of those things where it's like clearly Daisy is the one that he's like, I, like, I, like she's you, the I love winner, you. Yeah, I'm obsessed right. with you. And so it's like I'm willing to, you know, like fight through all of right. these potential hurdles of you not being there yet in this process, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But I just found it to be as a viewer interesting yes. because I understand we all have our different things that hit us in a weird 100%. way. And like for, for clearly for him, it's like, oh, the idea that you like he looks looks at it as like you're giving up on us you're not willing like i joey joey i that like was able to uh, uh take myself all the way through this process because i loved charity that much yes so i need to be with someone who's willing to go all the way through this uncomfortable process and that is then proving that yeah. they're willing to do that and that's then for him, the proving of love yeah. versus like i said for me i think i'd be a little more caught up in the idea of like oh, this person, it's not that they don't love me enough to stay. It's like they literally are like, I can't handle this anymore. Yeah. You know, maybe that says something bad about me. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. Or something where my, more my, you know, struggles are. But yeah. I don't know. I just, I just found that to be interesting. Uh, yeah, I felt the same. Because even there was even the moment too where, you know, at the group date, and we'll, we'll hop into that in a second here because I guess we're kind of talking about it already. But um, the group date at the very end where he didn't give a rose to anyone. Yeah. Him not giving a rose would have bothered me if I was one of the women at the end of that group mm. date. Cause I'd kind of be like, well, you don't seem sure enough between right. us. How are we, how am I supposed to be? So I don't know. There's a little bit of like, and I know that that's the whole thing with the bachelor. But you're starting to get to where like now the game's over a little bit. Now it's just a couple We've people hanging out. We've gotten to that point. Like, yeah. yeah. And I get that it like, yeah, I get that the process like it's the bachelor and the bachelorette and they're the one who's doing the choosing. But like you said, it's, you get to a certain point where if I was one of the women at that group, I'll be real. That would have been a flag for me that I wouldn't have liked. I would have yeah. been like, your your big trigger here is needing to feel like you know the person is so sure about you and would never leave you and will love you forever and you not knowing between the four of us to give one of the roses you're not sending everyone home yet but just to give one that you're not sure yet yeah. i'd be a little bit like you know clearly maybe production was like don't do sure. it for the drama sure. of it but i'd be a little bit like hey well you're not sure about me why are you yeah. why uh, you know I don't know. No, I agree. There entirely. were a few moments that I was feeling that way a little bit through this episode. It is interesting though. I will say he's really struggling. He won't stop talking about his fear of being left. Yeah. And it's kind of, you're kind of putting it in their head that like, that also creates kind of a pressure that also creates right. kind of like, I would and just I, say, like, I appreciate no, no, the I vulnerability. Think, I think being vulnerable it. is good, but I also think that like, it's not good to keep reminding yourself of your fears. It's like they're there all the time. At some point, like just yeah. accept this process. Also, no offense, man, but like you're way too hot. Okay. <laughs> Stop. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like you're a good looking, super cool guy who's like the lead on this show. And like everyone's losing their minds to get on the show to be with you. And you're just like, I don't know if anyone likes me. I'm going like, what? <laughs> oh, maybe, that, maybe that's part of the insecurity. It's like, oh, they just like me for my look. Sure. It and might like, be. You know, Listen, I'll take yeah, them. Don't then. foster I'll talk. Them, give them to me. <laughs> and I'll be don't able to foster, handle that. Don't foster talk. <laughs> <laughs> don't Listen, foster I'm willing <laughs> to experiment with those level of good looks to see Stop. if I can't handle it. Don't no. foster the toxic masculinity. I'm just playing. We want the vulnerability. I we know. Want it. I'm just saying. It's always hard for me when people that are that much better looking than me to talk about how insecure they are. I'm like, are you kidding me? Give me some of that. <laughs> no, no, you're absolutely right. To Lee's point, everyone is. That just shows you. You're all in our own world, struggling with our own things. Right. Of course. That was, all, that was a comedic no, bit, I everyone. <laughs> Um, but I know, but I know what I know, but the vulnerability is amazing. But I do hear what you're saying about it's like, the, it's, con the, uh, the conversation. At some where point, it is it will... vulnerability or is it some point, is it like dumping? Like you're just, you know what I mean? Like, you know, when you get right. really in a, in a, in a, in a, in like the, the dryer wheel and you can't stop kind of yeah. doomsdaying about something that you're struggling with. Yeah. It's starting to get like, is he be, are we past him just being open and honest or are we just kind of venting at this point about your fears right where it's at some point 
first of all, could be like a manifesting tool for something bad happening and also kind of reminding the women about your fear. I don't know. At some point, it's kind of like, how about we just think about the future and get them excited about the future and not just be like, don't leave. You know, yeah. I don't know. That's the energy I'm feeling. No, a no, bit, I like, feel you. I feel like that's maybe why there's a lot of tension in yeah. the space where because he has then mentioned it, you know, before numerous of the dates or the yeah. cocktail parties at this point where it's like, this is my biggest fear that there might be a level of pressure that the women might be feeling where like maybe Daisy, for instance, is like, okay, now I feel like I need to share this with him yeah. beforehand because I don't want to hurt him if I don't get there yet. Or, you know, yeah, just the pressure of like, okay, I need to make sure that I feel yeah. this exact way right. or else because I don't want to hurt him because they, they you know, everyone cares right. about each other. Right. Um, but anywho, so we had the group date. The group date um, was Jen, Rachel, Maria and Kelsey and uh, Kelsey T, excuse me, because Kelsey A ends up getting a second one on one date that we'll talk yeah. about in a moment. Um, and they ended up having the. Um, Lumberjack, aka Lumber Jill tournament. They had, I believe, yeah. Anita, who was a champion. Do you know how difficult this is? Like beyond, yeah. I would. I have never split logs in my life, nor will I ever, because I fear for anyone else around me. Is, I was just like chopping your own leg off. I mean, when she was swinging it down, and it like it's in between your legs. So no. unsafe. It's, it's so <laughs> insane. It's so insane. <laughs> It's so insane. Like you're standing on the log and you're swinging with all your might right in between your legs. It's also, like one wrong move <laughs> and your foot is gone. Also, <laughs> I mean, it's insane when you act. When I was watching it, I was kind of like, if you do this enough, the chances are it's all over at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right? if, you, if you do a hundred thousand chops how is it that you don't hit a knot and it just slides oh, off god. and just oh, oh my god i don't no. know that's, that's all happens i happens all the time i'm sure it happens but too like he was the champion <laughs> but, all <these> women, <laughs> but all these women just they were just here's an axe here's an axe here's yeah. an axe here's just a swing saw. for the fences it's just like the chuck the axe hit the like the, hit the log you know it was wild the moment where they were doing the sawing thing by the way i almost had to put my feet up on the couch because i almost <laughs> passed out because i was reminded of a time when i was probably like five or six years old when yeah. i went over to a friend's house this is why i don't do anything of the sort with these type of tools yeah is they had like a little kid's tool set yeah and they had it which is actually but welcome to the 90s kids. Yeah, <laughs> in the 90s they gave small children <laughs> tools at a young staple, age un <laughs> unsupervised there was a small saw yeah. in it and so i started to saw on a yeah. piece of wood and it was like sharp enough that it could get through but it wasn't super sharp yeah, but it could it could give you a little slice and it nicked me yeah. as i was sawing i'm gonna start i'm gonna pass out it <laughs> nicked my finger and i looked down and i ended up passing out that was the first yeah. time i passed out from blood <laughs> i was probably <laughs> like five or six <laughs> That's so dangerous. It's making me feel sick talking about it right now. <laughs> when I was watching this, watching this saw, I was having like flashbacks. Yeah, flashbacks. And that's why I was like, Maria, I see you, queen. When she was throwing those, uh, a throwing the axes and she was just missing every time. Was I was like, like, it was like almost hitting crew members yeah. behind it. <laughs> like, this is, number one, not safe. It needs to be stopped. Number two, I related so much. I was like, I see you. I feel you. Yeah. And that brings so much frustration on. And when she was saying, at if this you're point, bad at what you hate, Oh, it's like a double whammy. You and know like what I mean? she said, she's like, at this point, we're supposed to be feeling secure in our relationship with Joey. And this is not making me feel secure right, right. because it's like you're 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 now implementing all the things that I'm not good at. And I'm having to do it in front of people. And then yeah. we have to do a competition about it. I mean, shout out to all those women, though. They were crushing. I couldn't even believe it. Yeah, they were splitting logs and sawing and like. Lifting God, up just logs like a, like a tire and yeah. joey's just standing there i'd be yeah. like are you for real right now like what is this doing for you do you like this joey because if you like this i'm not your girl i'm out like you no. just want to watch me laboriously like hot like hack through wood for however long yeah it was bizarre it was wood. bizarre <laughs> anyway <laughs> <laughs> we have to take one more quick pause Goodness and then we get gracious. back to the group date <laughs> wood <laughs> Family, <laughs> you know me well enough over the years to know that if I can have a meal prepared for me, I am a happy lady. And if that meal also happens to be delicious and nutritious, I am a thrilled lady. So obviously I'm obsessed with Factor. Factor's delicious, ready to eat meals make eating better every day 
easy. Yes, wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, um, hello, meals delivered right to your door. Oh, yeah. So and good. everyone, these factory meals are so, 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 so good. They're delicious. Yes. And lots of variety, which mm-hmm. is huge. You'll have over 35 uh, different options a week to choose from, including vegan, veggie, keto, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. And get this, everyone. I'm talking two minute meals. Okay. Factors restaurant quality meals are ready to heat and eat whenever you are. You all know I live for that two minute meal life. Hello. And they have snacks, smoothies, and more. A wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites, and more. And we've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout. So if you're looking to save while simultaneously getting a beyond delicious meal that's also very nutritious, try Factor. It's the perfect solution if you're looking for fast upscale options done easily. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing 6 to 18 meals per week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. No prep, no mess meals. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. Head to factormeals.com slash momdad50 and use code momdad50 to get 50% off. That's amazing. That's code momdad50 at factormeals.com slash momdad50 to get 50% off. Family Factor is so good. For real, you should definitely try it. It's absolutely delicious. Um, Okay, Back to the group date. So, like I said, it was absolute, you know, it would have been uh, a danger, danger zone for me, yeah. but all the other women are crushing. Maria is struggling, and this is when we start to see Maria absolutely start to spiral, um, which, again, I saw chatter online where a lot of people were feeling like they didn't like how Maria handled this situation. Um, I just... First of all, you know I'm a Maria apologist, so no matter what Maria does, I will be like, yeah, there's she something is, about like my queen and I worship. I don't care if you're charming enough, you can kind of do anything. Like you're kind of like that, you know what I mean? You're so charming, you can kind of get away oh with God, a lot of wow. stuff. I it's actually true we though. Compliments. It is true though. You're very charming. Get away with and anything. What am I trying to get? Away with? Not get away with anything, but it's more like there is a thing that like the whole process of how she did her thing. There's a charm to it. You do that a lot too, where it's like if you're struggling or whatever. If you you're very charming, so it's it's endearing well, that's you. the point i'm trying to make that's is it can nice. be very endearing and not which was kind of why i was surprised by the way he responded but we'll get into that yeah so but i was seeing people having like thoughts about the way that maria handled it and like i said i'm a maria apologist so it doesn't matter right. what i will always support maria um, <laughs> we study the apologetics of maria. <laughs> of maria um but genuinely first of all i think maria we've seen it on her Insta stories and her TikToks where she's the first to admit when she's like, well, I shouldn't have done that or wish I wouldn't have done that. Um, But I felt like Maria, do we, do we not forget what she's been going through for the past, however many weeks? Yeah. Like, have we, lest we forget the pure exhaustion that this woman has gone through. She battled and defeated (laughs) three enemies back to back (laughs) to back. (laughs) Truly. And you know that not only was there clearly drama happening like off camera, yeah. right? There's a that's exhausting. The amount of ITMs that she probably then was doing because she was in the center of the drama and she's probably not getting any sleep has to be like doubly exhausting. So she's spending all this time getting to know Joey from a perspective of defending herself, which is emotionally taxing. Yeah. And now she's like, oh, I had this date. I've fallen head over heels for this guy. It's hard for me to open up. And now I've opened up to him. And now the feels are hitting me and the reality of it's hitting me and not only am i exhausted from my battles for the past few weeks now i'm feeling jealous yeah i'm like dude of course like i don't know i I just i think i think it has a lot to do first of all yeah the okay there's two different things there's his reaction and there's like the public reaction yeah i mean dude i i I think it was a a moment of realness and then she came back after crying and just said okay you know what it was like it was kind of one of those things it was a version of when what's her name said i shouldn't have told everyone i was 30 medina yeah (laughs) Yeah. it was just one of those things like i shouldn't have said that it was like she the emotion got the better of her the feelings got the better of her she said it and then after it came out she's like yeah i don't like that i'm coming back i'm good everything's fine so everyone having a problem with that, I'm like, 
have you never done that before? I mean, that's like, that happens all the time. Yeah, also, I don't know if tons of people are, but I saw some chatter on Oh, right, right. I was like, yeah. Also, him, because when she came back, he goes, well, you're really all over the place. He says something like that. Like, girl, you're all over the place. Well, I think she's, I mean, she teases him. She that's was giving I'm him saying. a hard time. And then she's, I'll never kiss you like, again, kind of thing. And then but she like kisses of, but him. But like, he kind of reacted to it in a way that was like, he almost didn't, process the fact that when she said no I'm not going to kiss you because you don't deserve it because I saw someone else kissing you earlier it, he almost like took it seriously no, that's what I'm saying he's Where kind he's of like, not tracking with some of the and then when she like, leaned in and kissed him and he's like you're all over the place I was like no no, no she's clearly she's yeah, being playful and she's, she's like I'm not going to give you a kiss and then she of course gives him a kiss two seconds later because that's part of the joke it's part of the joke it's part of the charm quite, it's the joke quite, it's the <laughs> thing there is a that's what I'm kind of getting at it's like he, he doesn't seem to have, like He's not used to dating someone with like the pa 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 energy yeah. like that. So I feel like he's a little bit like <laughs> she said, I don't know if I can do this anymore, left, came back, kissed him, and he was like, Wait, did you just say you were gonna leave, maybe? <laughs> like he's a little like behind on the pro it's like almost he almost needs time to process these moments yeah. to kind of digest them. Yeah, because, obviously her leaving wasn't a joke, but then no, when she did the whole I'm not gonna kiss. Her, right. Like, it's like she kind of and then it it was kind of confusing too, because later he's like uh, you know, and she left and um, came back. And so I don't know if, you know, I can handle this. And I'm kind of going, just for a few minutes, she walked out of the room and just kind of said, yeah. I needed a second. I so wonder it was how a little long... confusing. I'm like, she didn't leave, man. So why are you having multiple conversations with her to make sure she's good? Like, it was a moment of weakness because she was feeling stressed about the process. Yeah. She never once said, I don't like you. Right. Uh, no. You know, it was just. Now I get that he's like, oh, are you going to now leave at some point again when I it do gets more serious? That, yes. Even though I'm a little bit like, from, if I was from Joey's perspective, because you know how this show works, I'm like, after, once we hit hometowns, it's a lot more of like alone time and less like group time. So she'll probably be fine. Yeah. You know, she's not going to be seeing you with everybody else because you'll have a fantasy suite. That's and she true. won't be seeing it. But I felt like, okay, so the way that then Maria went about it specifically was that um you know he she was like i don't think i can do this anymore and they sit down and she's like i i just i'm so into you and i i just feel like i can't handle this knowing that like you know i want to be chosen too and you might not yeah. choose me and i feel like i need to i just have to go and and all of this but i felt like she communicated she communicated very clearly why she was having this exact process when she said hey when I first came on the show, she said, I know what show I'm on. Right, 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 right. I understand how this works. I'm not, I'm not unaware. But the issue is, she said, I went on specifically thinking, I want him yeah. to have his time with every single person so individually. Special, special, so then yeah. I know if he comes to me, then it's something special. And she's like, but now that I'm actually in it, I'm struggling. Especially this, this towards the end there. Yeah. And I felt like... That is, I feel like it, that's so true because when we think back about the first few weeks seeing Maria, Maria was one of the ones who was very calm, cool, and collected, who was like, girls, we're all going to have our chance. You go spend time with him, celebrated when one of the other women got to have a moment with him. I do feel like she genuinely went in with that emotional strategy, like enjoy your time with all the other people. And if you come back to me, like it'll yeah. mean that we have something special, but clearly the emotions are catching up with her and it's not something that she is able to process the way that she thought she was going to and on top of it all when then we see her say i don't think i can do this i don't think i can do this and he says well um i'm getting that you just you're gonna leave that's what i'm getting is that you're gonna go right and she gets up and walks away and is crying and then comes back and is like, hey, I'm really sorry. Yeah. I shouldn't have reacted that way. Hugs and kisses. I'm staying here. <laughs> is that, and she said, you know me. I say what I'm thinking out loud. I feel like we got a window into getting to know more of Maria and like the behind the scenes moments of the arguments that might have been going down in the house. Yeah. Maybe Maria's clearly the type of person who... I guess I'm saying this because I think people, some of the things that I was seeing online were saying, oh, it's manipulative, like trying to get him, oh. you know, whatever. And I'm like, I genuinely believe no, I didn't get that, that she's all. the type of person who she processes out loud how she's feeling. And that's probably why there were some, um, you know, altercations in the mansion because she says what she thinks out loud. And so some of the women probably had a hard time with that and it rubbed them the wrong way. And now in this situation, 
She was feeling super emotional. She was feeling like, I don't think I can handle this. And so she said out loud to Joey, I don't think I can do this. And then Joey immediately takes it, at least from the editing that we see very seriously. And is like, so it sounds like you're leaving. And so then she's kind of like, oh, I, yeah, I, I guess so. And then all of a sudden when she walks away and calms down. And I realizes, wait, do I want to throw this all away? It's like, wait a no. second. No. And then. It reminded me, maybe I'm defensive because it reminded me of some arguments that we yeah, had. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say, to be honest with you, the reason why I feel like it's not manipulative is because, <laughs> wait, am I being manipulated? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> wait, what? Um, no, but it's like, I feel like you're, you can be like that sometimes where you'll kind of say something and then kind of walk away from it for a little bit and be like, do I actually feel that way about this whole situation? No. And then you'll come back. I was so, literally just about to say we yeah. a couple days ago got in an argument because I went to you and I said, you're doing this thing that's really like bothering me and hurting my feelings and it's affecting me in all of these ways. And I was crying and it was like, it really, it's, it's hurting me. And you were kind of like, wait, what? It's, it's, I didn't know that it was bothering you this much and da, 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 da. And then when I walked away and gave myself like 20 minutes, all of a sudden through my own process, I realized that the reason that I was feeling so like heart and frustrated wasn't because of this tiny thing that you had done it was because of other factors in my life and other things that were affecting me and then I was putting that on you because I was emotionally struggling and so then I go back to you and go you know what I'm really sorry it right. wasn't yes when you did that that did kind of bother me but it wasn't why I then felt x y right. and z and I shouldn't put that on you and I'm really sorry and I love you and that's my bad and I feel like it was just because I process things out loud yeah. that then that can be a fault Yeah. where you're like, oh, dang, I shouldn't have said that. I apologize. And now I'm having to backtrack and be like, I'm really sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Yes. That's what energy I got That's from the energy Maria. I, got. I didn't get manipulation at all. And I felt like I felt like we, you know, another reason why I will stand by that is because when she walked away, I thought, does she want him to follow her? Like is she, okay, and because she's crying because we've seen this before on the show in the past where it's like you leave and you're crying because you want the lead to follow you out, understandable, and to comfort you and then maybe be like let's run off together. Yeah, but she leaves crying and then we see her talking to a producer, and she's going, I just feel bad because I don't want him to think that it's him. It's nothing yeah. he's doing. I'm having such a hard time. Yeah, she wasn't in the corner crying, being like he doesn't even care. Right, he's not right. following me. She's like, I don't want him to feel hurt. It's not about him. And then she goes back to him and says, I'm really sorry. Yeah. I'll stand by it. <laughs> I'll stand by it. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Maria for bachelorette. If it doesn't work out with Joey. Um, I think we're Maria for president. <laughs> <laughs> but that was their dynamic. Yeah. And um, clearly it rattled him a lot, though. It yeah, rattled it really him did. a lot. It really did. And um, we'll see if he can recover. Yeah. This might have been. Because it's like, that's his number one thing. Yeah. Is the leaving. So even her talking about it was like maybe the straw. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't know. Like you can talk about anything else, but with Joey, you talk about leaving. That is like, it's really hard for him to come back from that. Yeah. So we'll see if he can. And it might have been. It might have tainted his relationship with her. Yes. And especially we got a glimpse into what, because he does end up giving her a rose yeah. um, because they have, I mean, she's fabulous. The and they've got killer awesome. chemistry. And she's, and I will say that she does bring a completely different personality and kind of different style of energy. She, I so, think she brings a different style of energy than anyone we've ever seen on the show right. before. I think that's why America right. is quite captivated by her. She's completely different. So it's, he's having to figure that out. Now yeah. the question is we all want her for bachelorette if her and Joey don't work out. I wonder if her, the way she's handling something like this might Red put the producers, producers yeah. off from making her the bachelorette because they're a little bit like, oh, she does whatever she wants to do. She is in control. Agreed. You know what I mean? 100%. Um, of her own, like her story, she's taken control. Yeah. So that might be where producers might be like, yeah. oh, we're not going to, we don't want to take that risk, yeah. even though we would love to see it. Oh, yeah. But then, so for the rest of the evening portion of the group date, um, you know, he spent time with Jen and Rachel and Kelsey and with the other women. Yeah. It was all going really smoothly. They all had conversations. It was like, hey, you know, with Jen, she was like, these are the challenges with meeting my family that, you know, that you might have. And he absolutely embraced that and was yeah. like, hey, like, I want to meet them and I want to. That's his sweet spot. 
challenges. Yeah. Like he's, he does not fear challenges. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, and then, you know, Kelsey explained um, the dynamic then that her dad didn't know that yeah. she's there. So I at first was like, oh, my gosh, if Kelsey ends up getting a rose, which I thought she was going to. I was shocked that Kelsey didn't get a rose. Um, but. I was like, oh, are we going to have a hometown where the parent is like finding out like days before that they're going to be on TV? Uh, that might be wild. Um, but then we end up seeing him. He seems to be open to that. And then we see him talk talk to Rachel and Rachel's like, I can't wait for you to meet my family. It's going to be great. You know, yeah. I feel like Rachel is Rachel and Kelsey a are the smooth sailors for me mm. like they when they talked about their family they're very much like they're gonna love you it's gonna be great um they haven't had any bumps yet now we see a preview of rachel bawling mm. uh, before he leaves so the question is, is is it because she's gonna miss him or is it because something went down with her something happened meeting of the family but Rachel and Kelsey A are the ones to me that I'm like, we haven't had, it's just been all good yeah. ease. I think, I think the hometowns look like they'll go pretty smoothly. Uh -huh. We'll see. Um, but then he doesn't give anybody a rose. No rose for anyone. Kind of a smart move though, to keep the peace. He's kind of said, it's like everyone's really on edge. No one gets a rose versus uh, if someone gets a rose, you were saying it's a problem, but I was saying maybe if someone got a rose, then it throws them off going, wait, how, we're right out of the wire. I, Maybe I thought I was the one. I guess, but I if I, I'm just saying, if I was one of the women, it would it would for a moment make me think. Well, if he does give me a rose at the rose ceremony, he wasn't that confident about me. He still was questioning. See, my thought is, if he doesn't give me a rose, but he gave her a rose, now I'm in my head. If no one gets a rose, it's kind of like no one wins. No, no, no. But I'm saying, okay, so then. If he gives out a rose at that group date, yes. one person is questioning. But because he didn't give out a rose, now two people go, well, they, he wasn't sure enough about me to give me a rose at the group date. I see what you're saying. Okay, that makes sense. So to me, I'm like, Rachel and Maria are a little bit like, because he did end up giving them roses, a little bit like, okay, or his, is his connection with uh, Kelsey A and Daisy way stronger than ours? That's why, like... You know, yeah. he didn't hold off on giving them a rose on their one on one, but he, yeah. you know, held off on the group huh. date. Yeah. I don't know. I'd be like, I'd be tripping. I see, out of I see, I see. Um, and then we have the uh, one on one with Kelsey A, yeah. where they, Kelsey A gets another city exploration, which yes. I'm jealous Those of. Those are the best ones. She gets the, she gets the set up for the best dates. Yeah. They get to explore, hang out with the people in the town. Remember, who she are met, the stage they, they met a typical Canadian. That's what it said. Did you see that? Like they met that no, guy at the bar and it just, Canadian? it was just this guy. That there was is nothing insane. about him that looked Canadian or non-Canadian. He was just this. Well, that's because Canadian, what? <laughs> no, no, what I'm saying, he wasn't like a big bearded guy with a, with an ax on his shoulder. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't even like something like I'm just trying to find something that's stereotypical. He was just the most average looking guy. <laughs> and it just said typical Canadian. That's crazy. <laughs> what? That's like, a wild like, choice. Like here we are out in the wild. We've spotted one. <laughs> and it's like, so one thing I want to say real quickly, I've never seen. So she played pool mm -hmm. for a second and he showed her how to do it. And he hit, you know, cue ball went in the hole. I've never seen anyone react to hitting a ball in a hole like she did. <laughs> I mean, she jumped up and down and her face was like, you went to Vegas and you put a hundred thousand dollars on black. I mean, it was just like. Maybe she I. was like grabbing the walls. It was like losing consciousness, excitement about hitting this Maybe ball. Maybe unbeknownst to you, they had, had a money <laughs> bed was, going with the typical yeah, Canadian. It was. It was her. Her reactions are are amazing because yeah. she reacts. To she this, makes you feel good. She hits the ball in, and it's just like, oh my god! And then later on, they're like, yeah, well, you want to do a polar punch and she, a polar plunge? And she's like, oh my god! I love no, Joey was in Joey's shock like, by Wait, her reaction. You're excited about jumping in. Free Freezing water with 40 people we don't know. Like, can you explain something to me? One thing I will say about her, positive oh, vibes only. Positive vibes only. Like, life will be lovely with Kelsey yes, A. Life will, will be, be delicious Every and morning sweet. is like another beautiful reason to be alive, you she know? She seems to really soak up everything. See, I that's can, the energy I was talking about earlier. I'm like, I want to have that Kelsey A energy yes. where you're just like... 
a polar plot. Are you kidding me? And he, and he, he was, he was, genuinely, he, was he did not want to do he it. He was so mad at production. Like, he was sucks. like, I do not. And by the way, they were, when they had the, the news reporter pop in yeah. and go, welcome to Jasper. We're having the annual polar plunge. There was writing beneath. Yeah. That if you paused it and looked, the writing clearly it was added in, like fake, you know, yeah, after, yeah. and it said something about like would cause shrinkage. <laughs> like how dare they? <laughs> how dare they? Right, right, right. But no, Joey was not. He was a little. Gr- he was a little grumpster. This he was episode. a little grumpster. He was a little grumpster. I feel like it was the first time that we saw Joey got. He got like genuinely irritated at Maria when she left. Yes. He wasn't like sad, like oh you're gonna leave. Like there devastated. wasn't like a let me chase you down. Let me let me fight for he you. He was like a. Un- annoyed he was yeah. genuinely annoyed with her. there wasn't he a was fight like, for you vibe and i was also like okay i get that he might feel irritated because he's like oh man i've kept you around throughout through all of this yeah, i believed you, you forever that would have been, i kind of would have been the power move though for her to leave right in that moment he's like, like i've like, kept you, you around and believed you always but then yeah. i'm also like joey you gotta understand from her perspective she's been going through it yeah. um but no he was a little annoyed and he's a little grumpster about yeah. the polar plunge i was like is he a little different side of joey where he can be a little grumpy <laughs> If this is the worst Joey can be, then my God, what a joy. I think but, his thing will be, he'll be a little maybe Eeyore. Oh, get a little sad. I think he's a little Eeyore. Yeah. When he like, like his weakness will be Eeyore vibes. Sure. That's and the you, energy and I And you get. know what? God bless. We you know what I Eeyore. mean? He's the fact, I'll say this, at this point, I'm pretty sure almost every other Bachelor we've ever encountered by episode seven, we're like, we don't like The Bachelor anymore. And yeah. we all still love Joey. So yes, bravo to Joey. We love Joey. He's really seemed like a like a stand up guy. I agreed. Um, but no, he was a little grumpster. Well, he didn't like it. <laughs> he did not, he did not like it. Much. Which I understand. I mean, it's like, oh, hey, I would be like, here's a torture technique. You're like, what? You know what I mean? Like, I got to go in this freezing cold water just because it's popular now does not make it like equally insane <laughs> and he's like they also made us like me and daisy a few days earlier stand outside the hot tub and hug for like 20 minutes for a shot in the freezing jasper right, winds right you know i don't want to do this now right. and then so they made them polar plunge they stayed in for so long Evan. way longer than everybody else what in god's name i was like you guys get out well clearly they were supposed to stay there to have a moment you it know was what i like, mean i mean this is this is like dangerous temperatures right when you do a polar plunge yeah, it was this probably is 30s like, it was probably high 30s or low 40s everyone else who's done it you know probably a hundred times they're in and they're out joey and kelsey a are like swimming around in the water and floating and like chattering and they're yeah. like, i can't even move i can't breathe and i'm like Get out of the yeah. water. Get out. There was someone who was like, stay in. We're almost, you almost got the shot. They're like, no. Ah! You know what I mean? But yeah, no, uh, they stayed in a weird amount of time. Like a weird amount of yeah, time. Like two minutes too it long. It was bananas. I yeah. was like, I'd get, yeah, I do a quick dunk. I'm out. Quick dunk. Quick dunk, dunk I'm out. But then they did the sauna afterwards where that was lovely. But mm-hmm. then we had the evening portion. Um, and that was a moment where they discussed going home. And Kelsey talked about, she opened up about, um, how you know her dad and her weren't close when she was younger because he was so busy with work but then after they lost her mother that her dad like stepped up and has been there for the kids five kids which is wild um five kids that he's just been an amazing father for and present and available and loving and she's like he's the most incredible man and um you know how her kelsey a's dad says that this is something her mom would do and he's so proud of her and you know, it just seems like for Joey coming home to Kelsey A's family will seem like a warm hug. Now, we yeah. got a, a preview where her dad is like, hey, this is my yeah. this is my girl. Also, her dad looks like a Marvel superhero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> kind of worst like, case scenario when you meet a dad. He's the Silver Fox superhero. Yeah. Like, he has the jaw of Jaws and yeah. just like with his just jet white hair. So handsome. It's like worst like, <laughs> case scenario for any guy to just walk up on Miss on like you know Mr. Cap- Marvel, Captain America, and be like, "Cool, Captain America at like 60. And the girl's just, <laughs> just like, "My like, dad is my idol," and you're like, oh, "Great." Okay, well, <laughs> just so you know, it's going to be about fifty to sixty percent of what your dad is. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, she shares all of this with Joey, and Joey, per per usual, with Joey has beautiful responses, and he opens up more and. Um, I mean, I definitely seems like at this point, Kelsey is the front runner. 
right? It's always hard to know I mean, with him. Rachel. It's always hard to know with him, but I do think she is the shoe in. Yeah. Um, the energy I'm getting, to be honest with you, it's always hard to know. But the energy I'm getting is it's is that like Daisy is like on paper his number one. Okay. But her pulling away is messing with him. Okay. That's kind of the vibe I get. I think Kelsey is like right there. And he's, I think it's between those two. Because he's been captivated by Kelsey yeah, yeah. from day one. Even before we saw her at all, he was just like, Kelsey A, Kelsey A. There's been no drama with That's her. That's kind of what I'm saying. I mean, not that there's been drama with Daisy, but like she still is pulled back. But there's also, like I said, Rachel. Sure. Who we just haven't seen in quite as That's much. That's what I'm saying. I, they haven't cut to her as much. So she's a mystery. She could be the number one. You yeah, never know. She it's could just, be the number they one. haven't showed as much about her. So that's kind of the mystery there. Um, but from everything they've shown, it's the Daisy Kelsey. It's like, uh, yeah. if Daisy gave the energy that Kelsey gave, not energy, but like that amount of like, I love you, I'm here for you. Yeah. Daisy, I think would be number one. That's kind of the energy because okay. she's not giving any of that. And she's still, he's still like, okay, so will you please do, stay? So who do you think are top two? Right now it's Kelsey and, and, and Daisy. Okay. Yeah. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be Rachel and Kelsey A. I think that, I think that Maria and Daisy might leave. Yeah, I know. Oh, you're saying what are the top two? Like, where does it end? Or yeah, his yeah, yeah. top two? No, where does it end? Oh, uh, I agree with you. You think that they're yeah. going to leave too? I mm, feel like... No. Okay. I think Daisy's going to leave. I think Maria is going to get cut. Okay. Yeah, I think it's going to be too... It's going to get to him too much. I think it's that... going to pull up to the mansion and be like, uh, what? I think that one of them is going to leave next week and one of them is going to leave Fantasy Suite Week. And okay. I think that's going to be the the crazy breakdown of Joey. Yeah. That like he's going to be spiraling yeah. about the fact that like two of the top four left and like are my final two, are either of them going to want to be with me? Yeah. And I don't think we've ever seen two of the top four leave like that. leave before yeah that's my this is okay. my guess i love that because i'm getting like i can see maria leaving after him meeting her family and daddy being like he's not gonna be the next king of the sprinkle empire and yeah, we're sending you think him i'm gonna home. hand him all these sprinkles yeah <laughs> he's not gonna be tennis lessons does not translate to <laughs> sprinkle kingdom <laughs> <laughs> so he's not and i think if maria if dad says no then maria's gonna be like i'm sorry it's not sure. it's gonna be a no from me and then i feel like daisy's just not gonna be quite in a space and maybe after seeing her family that it won't be yeah. quite where she wants it to be then i think it'll be rachel and kelsey a i have no idea <sighs> from there but we'll see um but anywho so yes he gives kelsey a the rose and then we have the rose ceremony yeah. Uh, we have the cocktail party and all the women are like, we need this cocktail party to talk to him because he didn't give us a rose during the group date. Of course, Jesse comes in. No cocktail party. I'm like, knew that was coming. Yeah, duh. Um, and then Joey ends up pulling Maria aside beforehand. Yeah. Uh, by the way, if I was one of the women, I would have been I would have been like, so you're cutting our well, cocktail party. Pissed. Yeah, I would have felt the like, same way. The fuck? Yeah. Be like, so you're cutting our cocktail party, but she still gets, <laughs> you know, yeah. I love my Maria. But I'm like, but she still gets a moment. Yeah. Like to talk. To like plead see, I, her I case? But see, it's funny. That I wouldn't have taken that as as bad. I would have taken that as like, maybe she's going to get cut. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, but when she comes when back in. When you get pulled in. back, when you get pulled out, that means something bad is going on. I know, on. but then when she comes back in, it's like right. she got time to plead her case. Sure. It's a little bit like, sure. uh. um, But it works, you know? Yep. And um, he ends up giving, um, so Kelsey A and Daisy already had roses. And then he gives the roses, the remaining roses to Rachel and Maria, and we have to say yeah. goodbye to Jen and Kelsey T. And I'm not going to lie to you. I was shocked. Now, I also wasn't shocked because I could see all of these six women as the top four. So I, I didn't know. I didn't have any idea anyway. But I'm like, everyone seemed like they could have been top four yeah. energy with Joey. But we'll miss you, Kelsey T. and Jen. Yeah, that was your that was your number one. Kelsey T. I thought Kelsey T. was going to bring it home. Who was my but, number one? Lexi? Yes. Mm. Yeah, yeah clearly we, you didn't. Was, you I, know, got, both, I lost the last lost. week. You lost this week. We yep. officially out of the yep. running. But we're going to see all of them in paradise, baby. That's I believe true. it in my heart and soul if That's we have true. paradise this year, which it looks like we might not. Ugh, 
which is so tragic. Devastating. I know. I don't really want to think about it. I don't want to talk about it. But anyway, then we get the preview, like I said, with Kelsey A's dad. We have the tears from Rachel, even though it looks like it's going great with the family. We have the questions from Daisy's mother, I believe. Um, And then we have the media. Thank God. We made it to Maria's hometown. That's all I care about. All I care about this whole show is just meeting Maria's dad. And then we said episode one. We're like that. We said we need Maria to make it to hometown so that we can meet this absolute god of a man. We saw the backyard and him with a cigar and we're like, whatever it takes. And whatever it takes. And guess what, everybody? We did it. We got there. We absolutely got there. (laughs) Next week. (laughs) We get to meet him. And the preview that we get of this man is more iconic than I can even imagine. Like, he literally is just like... (sighs) In ITM's like Maria's daddy's little girl, and yeah. if uh, Joey hurts her, he's got another thing coming. And I was like, "Oh my god, it's the Godfather! I it is the Godfather that. of the Sprinkle Kingdom!" Oh, I love his he's energy like, you so think much. I made it to the top of the Sprinkle World being a nice guy by not being intimidating. Do you know what the sugar, the sh- the sugar mafia, is like? You don't mess with us. <laughs> yeah, keep going. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what the four kings of sugar are like? You know what I mean? It's like he's he's There's on the Mount Rushmore flour. of sugar. <laughs> oh, don't. Who are you gonna go? There's flour. There's baking soda. No, I, I, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> Me and Nestle teamed up. Yeah, no, I mean, I can't wait. What what a character! I cannot wait to meet this character. I cannot wait. I absolutely cannot yeah. wait. Well, family, um, tune in next week yes. to hear hometown recap, and also next week for Love Is Blind yes. recaps. Um, I'm very very excited. We love you all. Um, hope that you can all have a beautiful day and week, and maybe have some good cries, and remember that you're enough, just like who you are right now. Oh. You know what I mean. Love you all. Love you. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.